Hi, I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and today we have another sew along for you. This is definitely the most popular Friday Pattern Company pattern. It's the Wilder Gown. It's really fun because it's super customizable. You can play with the proportions, you can play with different types of fabric and I think it's really fun to sew because you don't have to deal with zippers or buttons or any of that mess. So yeah, I made my version for this out of this, um, this is a rayon by Alexia Marcella Begg and it's from Ruby Star Society and I picked this up at Stone Mountain and Daughter online. And it was just super fun to work with and I hope you enjoy, anyway, let's get into it. In this sew along I wanna share some tips I have on getting fabric cut out nicely and perfectly on grain. So I'm laying my fabric out and it's folded in half so the selvages are matching. That selvage edge is that lower edge that says Ruby Star Society. It's the manufactured edge that like runs across along your yardage that's called selvage. So you, your pattern piece will have an arrow on it if you're cutting two of it and that is your grain line. And so that, to get that perfectly on grain, you can measure and put pins in along the arrow at a consistent distance from your selvage. So that's what I'm doing here. And once you have those pins in place, you know it's perfectly on grain and you can start putting pins in around the piece. So I like to anchor the corners by pinning diagonally, just making sure the pin doesn't stick out past the piece. And then just more pins to anchor and then you can just cut it out. Uh, here I am chopping away. And then once it's cut out, you can snip in 3 eighths of an inch at each of the notches. Something that will save you so much time with the wilder tiers is ripping them out. So most woven fabrics will rip, like they'll rip straight along the grain. And you can test that out by just trying to rip a little chunk of your fabric. If it's a twill or, you know, some sort of jacquard or something, it's not gonna rip, but try it. So all you have to do is snip through the selvage and then grip it and rip it, baby, all the way to the other side. And then you wanna snip through the selvage on the other side. So I just cleaned the edge up by ripping off this and then I'm gonna measure out the length of my rectangle for my tier. So the, the skirt, if you're making the full length wilder, it's five rectangles make up the skirt. Two rectangles make up the first tier and then the lower tier is three rectangles. So you will, so I'm cutting out my, ripping out my length and then I am going to rip the width out. And you can mess around with these rectangles. Like they could be longer, shorter, fuller, less full. Sky's the limit. And you know, if you, so I'm 5'6", and that is the height that I draft for. If you're shorter than that, then you know, you might wanna make your tiers a little bit shorter. If you are taller, you know, you might wanna make them longer. And yeah, you can also maximize your fabric here by like using the full width Maybe it makes your skirt a tiny bit less full, but it won't really matter. Anyway, so just play around with these. Once you have that done, you're gonna um, just get five rectangles cut or torn out, and then we'll be ready to sew. Grab your two front piece A's and place them right sides together. We are going to stitch down the center front. The, there's a notch there that you'll match up. And then when we sew this, we're gonna use a long basting stitch to sew down from the top to that notch. Then we're gonna back stitch at the notch and then we're going to shorten our stitch length and we are going to sew down to the bottom. I'll show you that on the sewing machine. Here we are at the machine and I'm lengthening my stitch. And then you're gonna start up at the top and just stitch down using that long length, long stitch to the notch. And this is because this is gonna get opened back up. We're just temporarily sewing this shut. This is kind of where the neckline and the opening to your neck is going to be. So there's back stitching and then we're shortening our stitch length and then sew all the way down to the bottom. Now we'll press that open. So just grab your iron, give it a quick little press and then I'm opening it up and then pressing the seam flat open. And then you are going to fold the raw edges under one quarter of an inch all the way down on both sides and we're gonna top stitch those. So that's what I'm doing here. And if you have like a really unruly fabric that you're working with, you can also put some pins here to hold these in place. Uh, 
So now we are at the machine and we're going to just edge stitch these in place. So I'm just coming down one side and then I will come back up the other side and you can see I'm kind of wrangling my edges under here because I decided to not use pins. I'm not a big pinner. It, you know, it's comforting if you want it, but for me, I find it's faster to just kind of do this, work this as I'm sewing, but to each their own. Great, now that we have those top stitched, we are going to open up the top of our bodice starting where that back stitch is. And I can kind of see this, but it's hard to see on camera. So I'm just using a seam ripper, the little red ball side down to rip this open. And you can do that more carefully. That's just how I like to seam rip because I live on the edge. Now we will join our fronts with our sleeve piece C. So you are going to match the single notch on your front piece with the single notch on your sleeve. Both sides look like one has a single notch, one has a double notch. So make sure you're matching these single notches and just pin those in place. And then you're gonna use the 5 8 inch seam allowance to just sew down this seam and you'll repeat on both sides. Here I have that done on both sides and now I am going to finish these seams. So for this project, I'm using a serger to finish seams. If you don't have a serger, you don't want to use one, you can use your zigzag, whatever your preferred method is. I do love using a serger because it makes it a lot faster and it makes your seam finishes really clean. Anyway, so here I have both of those seams finished and I'm going to attach the back to the sleeve. So we're matching the double notch on the back with the double notch on the sleeve. Pin that in place and then you will just again pin this in place along this seam and use your 5 8 inch seam allowance and then you will finish the seam, repeat on the other side and we're gonna have a crazy looking loop. Here is said crazy looking loop and <laughs> I, um, I haven't mentioned yet, but it should, it's kind of obvious. I'm making the short sleeve version, so it looks especially kind of like a weird creature. Anyway, so we're going to fold this right sides together, and then we are going to match up. The sleeves get folded in half, and then we're going to match up those underarm seams, and we're just going to stitch along this underarm seam and side seam all in one go using our 5 8 inch seam allowance. We'll repeat on both sides and then we'll finish the seam. Here's that done and now we're going to finish the sleeve hem. So grab your iron and flip it inside out and we're going to press the edge of the sleeve under one quarter of an inch all the way around and then we're going to press it under another half inch all the way around and then we're going to edge stitch along that fold to finish our sleeves and we'll do that on both sides. Again, you could use pins here to hold this in place and you might have to if you are using unruly fabric, but I'm just, uh, you know, pressing it. Anyway, there it is done, looks great. And now we're going to move on to finishing the neckline. So we will fold this edge, top edge of our neckline under one half of an inch all the way along the neckline. And as you can see, I'm just kind of using my ruler at the seams to make sure that I'm still on track with a half inch seam allowance, working my way all the way across. After that's all pressed in place, we are going to press it under another two inches. So I'm just measuring that and getting that pressed nicely. And I am pinning this one in place because we are going to be edge stitching it. So here I go, working my way around the neckline. Uh, this fabric does get a little wrinkly, so I had to press out a little uh, wrinkle right there so that it didn't get so weird. After we have this all prepped, we are going to edge stitch all the way around the neckline an eighth of an inch from 
that folded edge and remember to back stitch at the beginning and end of this stitch. Here we have that done and looks good and we just have one more stitch to do before we for our neckline so we're going to add another stitch one inch up from that last seam that we made and you can sometimes I mean on my machine I can see like one inch from the edge I have markings on my uh, what is that plate um, but if you don't or if you want a line to follow I'm just marking this one inch up from the seam with a ruler using chalk so that I have a guide and then again back stitch at the beginning and end of this seam and here that is done and we have a little channel for our tie to go through so let's make that tie all right grab your tie piece D's uh, and then match them up right sides together and then we're gonna sew them along just this little short little line right here Here I have that done and we're just going to press that cute little seam open and then we'll fold our tie in half lengthwise and we will press it in half all the way down. Once you have it pressed in place you are just going to sew a tube using our 5 8 inch seam allowance. We'll just sew along there all the way down. And here I have that done and I'm going to trim away some of the excess in the seam allowance. This will be especially important if you're using a thicker fabric because it'll just be kind of bulky. So here I go, trimming it away. Now we need to turn this tube right side out. So we'll use a safety pin and we will attach it to the end of our tube. Just pin it on there and then stick your safety pin back into your tube and just start inching it along and I kind of pull away the excess as it gets kind of scrunched up and then I'm just working my way down the tube until it comes out the other side and then you will just pull it through and then kind of inch this fabric down until your tube is magically turned right side out. Cool, so you can ditch the safety pin and then we'll just press this so that it looks nice. So. I'm just kind of laying it out flat, moving it flat with my fingers, and then just pressing along the tie. And then when you get to the end, we are going to fold in the raw edges. I'm just doing that here, and then I'm just gonna give it a little press. Sorry, that's not on camera, but I just pushed it in, and then I'm just doo, giving it a little press. So I'm going to show you a cool trick for this. These little types of things love to get sucked down into your feed dogs. So I'm just putting a little piece of tissue, this is actually tissue from the pattern, underneath, and then I'm using that just between the um, tie and the feed dogs to stop it from being pulled down. And then afterwards, you can just rip it away. You might have little chunks of paper in there, but you just kind of pick them out and you're all good. And then we are going to run this tube through the channel that we created on our neckline. So just again, putting a safety pin on the end and then we are just doo -doo -doo, inching it through that little channel and pulling it flat until it comes out the other side. And so that, once you have this done, this is technically your bodice. And if you were making the shirt version, obviously the bodice would be longer unless you're making a crop top. And all you would need to do now is hem the bottom, but since we're making the dress, we're gonna move on to the skirt. So I'm grabbing my skirt panel, and then I'm gonna grab a second skirt panel and then put them right sides together. And then I'm going to sew them together down the side seams using our 5 8 inch seam allowance. Here I have that done and I finished the seam using the serger, and now we are going to add our gathering stitches. For your gathering stitches, you're gonna use a long straight stitch and sew a quarter inch from the edge of your fabric, and then you're gonna sew another row of long stitches right next to it. And for this, I'm actually gonna sew, I'm just gonna go from one end of the tier to the other, and then I'm gonna repeat it on the other tier, so I have two separate, um, sets of gathering stitches for the front and the back. And here that is done so you can see the long stitches and now we are going to gather. 
To get nice evenly distributed gathers, we want to divide the, um, our skirt up and then we're also going to divide our bodice up into quarters. So, it's, so I folded in half so the side seams matched and then I marked those two spots. And then the bodice pretty much has quarters, so you've got your center front and your two sides and then you just need a center back. So I'm just kind of matching those all up to find the center back and now we know that the, uh, the tier needs to be gathered into the size of the quadrant that it is being sewn to. So you just pull on the stitches to bring them in and I like to go around and kind of just eyeball how small it's going to be first to just wrangle it in and then I'm going to pin matching the side seams and the center front and the center back with the corresponding quadrants on the tier and I'm going to uh, just you know refine the gathering and distribute it with my fingers. Getting these gathers right, it can be kind of an ordeal, but it's once you get used to it, uh, it's fun and it's a good. It's a good skill to know because you can add like a gathered ruffle wherever you want on anything. So here I am matching the quadrants up, and then I'm pinning them together or clipping them rather using my wonder clips, and then I'm just adjusting it. So I'm making sure it's the right length and then I'm distributing the gathers evenly and you can spend as much or as little time doing this as you want. If you want to get like super into it and make sure that they're perfectly spaced you can do that but I find that getting pretty close is good enough and then once it's sewn you can also like kind of mess with it as you're sewing and also once it's sewn in you're not going to be able to tell unless there's like big swaths where the gathers are like super concentrated and then you know, and then it's flat. Like you can see that, but you can't see if it's not perfectly 100% evenly distributed. I wanted to show you how I sew these, just so you can see how I kind of manipulate the fabric as I go. So I'm making sure that the gathers are going under the presser foot straight rather than at an angle. If you let it hang, you might get gathers that are like, uh, wonky once it's sewn. So I'm just kind of slowly going through and I'm picking at it to make sure nothing's too scrunched up as it goes under the presser foot and just feeding that under slowly and working my way around the skirt. After you finish sewing this tier, you're going to finish this raw edge. You're going to remove any visible uh, basting gathering stitches and then you're going to finish this and then if you're just doing a single tier one you're done you just need to hem it otherwise we're going to do the third tier which is pretty similar but just a little bit more complicated or not complicated it's just a lot of fabric to wrangle but you can do it do not worry so here is that tier attached and i gave it a press and finished the seam and this is an exciting step because it looks like a dress. <laughs> now we're going to move on to that lower tier. Okay so the three tiers I have sewn together and you basically just sew the three tiers together to make this big old loop and we want to divide this into quadrants because I want to sew the gathering stitches between the four quadrants instead of so doing four sets instead of doing one big one going all the way around. So I'm using one of the seams to match up and fold in half to find one side and then I'm matching that seam up with the mark I just made to fold in again and find another quadrant and then there's our fourth quadrant. And so I'll stitch between those making the basting stitches. Here I have that done and I am going to just pull them in a little bit because this is a big ol' loop that just needs to be wrangled in a little bit more before it's, otherwise it's just gonna be too crazy trying to uh, pin it to the lower tier of our dress. So like you did with the bodice, you are going to find, and the top of the first tier, you're going to find the quadrants on 
the hem of that tier that you just sewed so that you can match them up with the quadrants on the lower tier. So that I've already done that and now I'm matching them up and pinning them together. And then this is the same process that you did when you attached that first tier, it's just bigger. So it's a lot more just manipulating fabric. So it takes a while, but once you get those quadrants matched up, you're just going to again pull the gathers in if needed and distribute the fullness and then add more uh, add more pins or clips and then just work your way around and then once you're done with this you'll sew it same way you did with the first tier and then you're gonna finish the seam and then we're ready to hem this baby up and finish it she is and I don't know why I can feel compelled to tie this in a bow every time that I put it on the camera but we got our first tier and our second tier so all that's left to do is hem the bottom so fold the raw edge of your hem under one half inch and press it and then fold it under half inch again and press it and then you'll edge stitch it similar to what you did with the sleeve hems and you are done here is that finished hem and we are ready to style and wear our wilder gown yay hey it's chelsea coming to you live in my new wilder gown and i just wanted to talk a little bit about neckline ruffle placement so Here's how I like to wear it. I like to get it tied up, kind of scrunch it in, kind of tight. So it's up around my neck, but it's not tight. It's not choking me. Don't worry, I'm fine. See, I can fit my hand in there. So I like it up. This is up to your personal preference. So if you want it looser, have it looser. So, and then once it's tied, a lot of the ruffles will concentrate towards the front. So I'm just, I scooch, them back to kind of distribute them so that like half or so are back behind, half are in front, and then I just kind of work the gathers around uh, until it looks and feels right. And I find that if they are concentrating like up on my traps that I don't like how that looks so I try to scooch it off of my shoulder and then if you want, if you're like this is how I'm going to wear it. You can do um, stitches across the tie uh, to anchor things in place. Like you could do it back here, you can do it up front, you can do it um, like if you're gonna wanna wear it untied. You can do them right at this opening so that it holds it and then that. And it really kind of depends on your fabric and uh, how you want it to look. So like if you are using a more rigid fabric that has maybe some texture on it, it's not the, everything's gonna stay in place better. If you're using something really slippery, like this is kind of slippery, it easily like slips into different positions. So I find that wilders that I've worn a couple times like naturally fall into the way that I want them around the neckline after I've worn them a couple times. But yeah, you just have to get in the mirror and play around with it. And then once you got your thing, you're ready to go frolic or whatever. Here is my Wilder in all its glory, and I'm so pleased with how it turned out. I can't wait for it to just get a little bit warmer so I can wear this baby out on the town. Well, I mean, on the walks around my neighborhood is more like it. Uh, I hope that this sew along was helpful or inspiring or whatever, and yeah, we'll be back soon with more fun sewing content. Bye.